Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, the last thing I think we need to work on for the head is the eyes. What we need to do is create an eyeball so we can put it in here and then adjust the eye socket around it. At this point in time, it looks kind of like it's collapsing a little. So let's give this a try. I'm going to go to a brand new layer over here. And I'm going to go to the Create tab and I'll click UV Sphere. And let's take a look at this. I don't think we need 32 sides for this. Let's maybe give it uh, 16 by 16 here, something like this. And let's rotate it around the x-axis. I'll press RX90. And now this is where the pupil and the iris is going to be. Now the eye is really two parts. One is the inner eye with the white and the pupil and the iris. The other is the outer eye that's the clear glassy part, the cornea. So I'm going to switch this from a UV image editor to the outliner here. And let's call this um, the inner eye right here. Eye inner. And then let's duplicate it. Shift D. And let's ca call this the eye outer. Like that. And let's make this just a little bit bigger here. Let's bring the scale, maybe let's call this, let's see how 1.1 1 .1 is. Mm, that may be a little bit too big. Let's try 1.02 and see how that works. Yeah, I think that'll work. What I've done is made the cornea or the outer eye just a little bit bigger than the actual eye itself, than the inner eye. All right, so now what we need to do is work on the pupil and the iris. So we don't need the outer eye right now. I'm going to click on the little eyeball over here and turn that off. And now let's work on this one. So the iris is going to be this area here. And it's a flat part of the eye. This, uh, the, the iris is kind of flattened on the front of the eye. So what we need to do is move the 3D cursor to the center of this ring of points. So I'll press Alt and click that edge, and then I'll press Shift S and move the cursor to the selected. And now the cursor's right there. Now let's select this point and press Control Plus to expand that selection. And now if we come around to the side view, and I'll go to wireframe. Now we can, if we go to scale, we can move that pivot point to the 3D cursor and then scale this in. We can scale it out or we can scale it in so it's kind of flat and we could even make it so it's a little bit concave. Yes, convex. I believe that's concave. <laughs> um, so I just curved that in just a little bit, so it looks kind of like that. Now what I can do is add a couple of edge loops in here to hold that edge when we smooth it. So I'll go ahead and do that like this. There we go. And now this edge here is going to define the pupil. So I'm going to take that and maybe even scale it in just a little bit. I don't know if that pupil needs to be quite that big. There we go. So if we select these faces, I'm going to press C to go to the circle select tool. And now we can extrude this in like that. Now we're going to need to add some edge loops to hold this when we smooth it. So I'll press control R and add these edge loops here like so. And maybe another one in here, like that. All right, so that is the beginnings of our eye. I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. See how it looks. I'll turn the views up to 2. And I'll also come over here to the Tools tab and click Smooth Shading. Yeah, so there we go. There's the beginning of our eye. Now, this interior part is going to be black, of course but I think that'll work pretty well. Now one thing we can do inside here to avoid any pulling, anytime you've got 
these kinds of edges coming into a single point, you have the possibility of some polling there. So what we can do is I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier for just a moment right there. And I'm going to go to face mode and select these again with the circle select tool and I'll hit E and ex to extrude and then scale them in just a bit. And if I scale them in you can see I'm moving it toward the 3D cursor and I don't want to do that. So I'll come back here and change this back to median point and I'll scale these in. And now what we can do is we can actually select every other edge here. Just go through and select every other edge like so. Press X and dissolve edges and that will then change those tries to quads and now we shouldn't get quite so much pulling or polling in there like that. All right, now we need to do a similar thing for the cornea or the outer eye. I'll bring that one back and I'll go ahead and hide the inner eye just so we don't get so we don't accidentally select that. So let's do a similar thing here. Let's tab into edit mode. Let's select this edge. Make sure the 3D cursor is move to that selection. There we go. I'll select this point, press Control plus to expand the selection. And now if we go to the side view and I can change the 3D cursor, I can change the pivot point to the 3D cursor by pressing the period key. And now I'll scale this instead of scaling it in. This time we're going to scale it out just a bit so it bulges out just a hair like that. All right, so now we want to insert a couple of edge loops again around this edge, like so. There we go. And now we can add a subdivision surface modifier, see how we're doing. And we can click smooth over here, take the views up to two. And now here is where you can really see that polling. You see how we can see the triangle polygons here. So what let's do is let's do our trick and see if we can alleviate some of that by selecting every other edge here. Pressing X and then dissolve edges and that should help a little. Yeah, that helps actually quite a bit. Okay, so now we have both the outer eye here and the inner eye in there. Now we can take these up and put them in the eye and test it out. So I'm going to select them, both of these objects. Uh, I'm going to change the pivot point back to the median point. Let's now move this back up into the head. I'll scale this down a bit, bring the head back on layer one, and let's bring this up. There we go, that's a good look. I like that. I think I'll go back to the character screen layout here. And let's try and place these like this. So I'm going to scale it up a bit and just move it into place. I'll go back to the default view. And we've got some work to do here now, don't we? <laughs> so the difficulty of it's going to be is finding the right size for the head and once we find the right size and placement we're then going to have to work on moving and adjusting the points around the eye socket to mold and fit around the eyeball. And so we'll work on that in the next video. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling toolset as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, 
and will add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.